guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing you another travel vlog. If you have not been following me until now, I have already a few travel vlogs on my channel. So I'm going to link the playlist up here. So if you're interested, you can watch those videos uh, as well. Before we get into the um, travel vlog section and I will show you, you know, where we were and what parts of Cyprus we checked, I just want to share with you a few practical information about our trip and then we will jump in to the travel vlog. This travel vlog is going to be about our trip to Cyprus. We went to Cyprus at the end of April for four days from Saturday to Tuesday and this was the weekend of the Orthodox Easter, which is important to note because the Greek Cypriots are actually Orthodox, so they were actually celebrating Easter during this weekend, which means on Sunday and Monday actually most of the stores and even some of the restaurants and places which might be interesting for tourists were closed which could be a bit difficult uh, when you're traveling to face that uh, the stores are closed. Luckily, uh, we went to the supermarket to get our stuff that we needed for our trip on Saturday when they were still open. That was lucky because following this, it was quite difficult to buy, let's say, if we wanted to get a bottle of wine, <laughs> that was uh, not very easy. So just so you know, uh, if you're traveling at the end of April or, you know, around March and April period, just to check whether it is the Orthodox Easter time or any other holiday that might, uh, you know, interfere with your holidays. Anyway, uh, it didn't impact us that much. I actually liked that, uh, you know, some parts of the cities and some areas were actually quite quiet and there were not so many people around obviously there were already tourists but during this period in april it was still not crowded and i actually quite liked that the weather was really good we had between 25 to 30 degrees during the day in average uh, in the evenings and in the night it got a bit chillier so you needed you know a jumper maybe or an extra extra layer but it was still quite nice the water, however, was not yet, at least for me, was not yet warm enough to bathe in. But there were already some people who were swimming and enjoying the sea as well. And the beaches were actually quite full for April, I guess. I mean, I've never been to Cyprus before, so <laughs> I don't have a comparison, of course. So we flew into Cyprus uh, on Saturday from Vienna. Our flight was fairly early in the morning at 7 a.m. and it's a three hour flight. Uh, Cyprus is actually one hour ahead of our time zone. So we arrived at 11 and we checked the COVID measures and the COVID related travel rules before we were flying. And on their website, they said that, you know, you either need to be vaccinated uh, against COVID or be recovered recently from COVID or you need to take a test before traveling. So we are vaccinated, we were taking our vaccination certificates, but in fact, it was never checked, not, on, not by the airline or not upon arrival by the authorities. However, what we were not aware of, and maybe just somehow skipped our um, attention when we were researching, or it was not really uh, displayed obviously anywhere, that uh, upon arrival we were all brought to a testing station and we were tested uh, with a PCR test against COVID, which, you know, it added a lot of time to our arrival. Uh, this testing took, uh, let's say, an hour because everyone from the plane was tested uh, and we had to wait and we were at the end of the testing row so we then had to go into a bus and then wait for the people who were still after us to finish and then we were brought to the arrivals hall by bus even though the testing location and the arrivals hall were maybe 50 meters away from each other, we still had to take the bus. Obviously, we didn't know before that it is actually uh, very close by, but I'm, I'm also pretty sure that they wouldn't have allowed us to walk this distance. It was already after 12 noon when we finally got out of the airport and then uh, we needed to find the car rental from which we already rented a car in advance online. We already booked a, a car, so 
renting a car online this was the first time that I did it like so in advance uh, but it was good because we already knew in advance how much is it gonna cost and we could choose the car that we wish to rent and you know like compare the prices so we actually just went for the cheapest car it cost us um, a little bit over 100 euros for the three days from Saturday noon until Tuesday morning which I guess is a, is a good price, especially if you consider that we asked our accommodation in advance, you know, what is the best way to get there from the airport, um, is it by taxi or do they have public transport? And, you know, public transport would have been complicated, uh, having to switch because our accommodation wasn't in the city centre in Larnaca, it was a little bit outside of Larnaca. So they were telling us, yeah, well, a taxi ride should, ta uh, should cost us 25 euros per person, which I consider to be quite expensive. So if it's like 50 euros there, 50 euros back, it's already 100 euros and we didn't go anywhere else yet. But even if it's just 25 euros for both of us, it's still 50 euros, but we still didn't travel anywhere else. So we paid, let's say 120 euros for our car. Of course, we also had to pay for the gas afterward, but then we were flexible enough to be able to travel around the, the island, uh, and also in the city itself and it ended up being just the most convenient. Um, the problem was however at the airport is that they didn't have an office at the airport, the, um, the company that we booked from and it, yeah, we found it a bit difficult to find the location where we are supposed to go. So what I would suggest to the rental companies is that they should maybe give more instructions on where to go after their arrival at the airport because it was just uh, written at the information section regarding the location of pickup they just said shuttle bus and yeah well what does that exactly mean right so um, yeah we learned that we had to go to a location where there is a shuttle from the car rental company picking us up and bringing us to the to their office where we do the paperwork and then we take the car from there but this was not really obvious to us and I didn't really have experience with such be from before. So this is something that might be good to know before you travel if you are uh, interested to book a car. You can obviously also go by tra public transport to the city of Larnaca. I'm not sure about other cities, you can check that. I was not really interested in checking that because I didn't need that. So as I said, we were staying in a hotel outside of Larnaca. It was it is called the Libe Beach Hotel. It has very good reviews on booking. They are right on the seaside. We got a room facing the sea and we had the half board. We decided to do that and pay a little bit higher price for half board because um, finding restaurants and also the price for three dinners um, would have been higher probably in the restaurant than there in the hotel and actually the food, food was really good it was a lot of food that we could eat for dinner some days we had a buffet dinner other days we had a menu that we can or we could order for from and we could get a starter a main dish and a dessert and it was like really a lot of food i do recommend this hotel it was a really nice hotel renovated very the atmosphere was nice it has direct access to the beach uh, we were not really happy with the with the staff at least the, the waiting staff uh, during our dinners they were judging you based on you know like uh, the tip that you give and actually we wanted to give a tip at the end uh, for the three dinners not like every day separately and you know after the first day when we didn't give a tip uh, well after that we didn't really receive the best service but that's uh, something that we learned after obviously and of course we will do it differently <laughs> uh, second time around so if you are going to stay in that hotel just and and get uh, service there from the waiters just make sure to give a tip because they really look for it <laughs> so yeah, I hope it wasn't too long, this introduction and the extra information that I wanted to share with you and uh, now we can jump in to the part that you clicked this video for, <laughs> the blog. So enjoy! I just realized that I didn't really take footage of the hotel except for the inside 
where well, this is the restaurant section where you could have your dinner and breakfast and then they also had a terrace extension to the restaurant we had breakfast here once one morning and they had a bar as well and there is also actually a swimming pool and this was the view from our room one morning i was trying to take footage of the sunrise but it was a long time for the sun to appear so yeah i was a bit uh, impatient but eventually it came out Our first destination was the Church of St. Lazarus in Larnaca. The Church of St. Lazarus is a late 9th century Greek Orthodox Church. It is one of the three Byzantium churches which survived in the country. Lazarus was the first bishop of the city after fleeing Judea. The church later became Roman Catholic under the rule of the Franks and the Venetians, and under the Ottoman rule it actually became a mosque. And during every rule, the church had new additions to its design. The original bell tower, for example, were destroyed during the Ottoman author, uh, during the Ottoman rule. And then, when the Ottomans allowed Cypriot churches to have bell towers again, then it was rebuilt in Latinate style. Following the church, we stepped into a small grocery store where they were selling traditional Cypriotic food. For example, the soyo kuz, which is a sweet dessert type food with nuts and what grape jelly. The Cyprus delight? It's better than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> so you say I should try? Maybe. Go for it. <laughs> The cuisine of Cyprus is mostly known for the halloumi cheese made of goat milk, uh, olives, pita bread and creole meat, other than the sweets, um, the Turkish delight type of sweet dessert. Following this we made our way to the beach, the weather was quite good, at the end of April it was around 25 to 30 degrees, during the day it was windy on the seaside however, and the water was pretty pretty cold. Located at the end of the promenade, of which I'm going to talk in a second, there is a medieval castle which is believed to have been originally built during the Middle Ages and took its present form during the Ottoman rule. After the end of the Ottoman era, however, the British converted this uh, building into a prison and it was used during the first years of their rule. Today the castle houses the small Larnaca medieval museum. Larnaca's most popular road, which is called the Finicotes, sorry for if the pronunciation is not correct, this is a coastal pedestrian street and the beach that is alongside the Athens Avenue and owes its name to the palm trees on both sides of the road. It is the heart of Larnaca's tourist life with bars and restaurants of which I would recommend the Vivid for example, which is a bar and a restaurant. Well, here we only had uh, some cocktails and a dessert, but they were both really good and the atmosphere was great, the music was nice. Yeah, well, the whole atmosphere I feel like is just very vivid, if you know what I mean. Later in the day, we made our way to the Larnaca Aqueduct. This aqueduct was built in the 18th century, bringing water to the city from a source from around 10 kilometers away from the city. The structure was in operation until 1939 and it consists of 75 arches. It is one of the most important monuments constructed during the Ottoman period in Cyprus. From the aqueduct you can go on a short hike to the Larnaca Salt Lake, which is a complex network of four lakes, three of which are interconnected. Uh, and they have all different shapes and sizes. It fills with water only during the winter season between November and March and is visited by a lot of different types of birds, including flamingos who stay here during this period. It usually dries up, however, for the summer. At the end of um, April, when we were there, there was still water in it, but it was, I guess, already starting to dry up.
cold? Yes. <laughs> How cold? It is, it is quite cold. <laughs> The morning of the second day we drove to Ayanapa, which is a tourist resort at the far eastern end of the southern coast of Cyprus. So this is also on the Greek side. Here you can find hotels, restaurants, beaches and all kinds of water activities from going on a boat and the submarine rides, water sports, beach games, all that. You can go on boat trips, for example, to Famagusta on the Turkish side or to the Aphrodite's Rock on the western side of the island. But these boat trips take two to four hours or maybe even longer. So actually we decided not to do it because we had a tight schedule. <laughs> so we were just walking around, enjoying the sunshine and the beaches. We had a some coffee and drinks and we proceeded towards the city center where they have a monastery as well. charming medieval monastery of Ayanapa stands in the middle of the village and it was built in the form of a medieval castle in the 16th century when there was no village surrounding it yet. The village was built around 200-300 years later. The monastery was restored in 1950 and in 1978 it became an ecumenical conference center. A new church was built in 1994 southwest of the monastery the monastery, however, has been closed down in 2020 and it is currently not possible to visit. Apparently they are turning it into a museum. On the afternoon of the second day, we drove towards the middle of the island to the village of Lefkara, which I found on Instagram. And it is apparently the most picturesque little village slash town in Cyprus. It is situated at the foot of the Trodos mountains in the southern eastern region and is world renowned for its traditional handicrafts of lace embroidery. So basically this is where the Cypriot folk needlecraft art called Lefkaritiko was born. The character of this village is very picturesque with, with its narrow winding streets and traditional architecture of old terracotta roofed houses. Unfortunately, we were visiting on Orthodox Easter Sunday, so the city was quite dead and we didn't really find many things which were open, maybe a few small restaurants and everyone actually seemed to be enjoying their time off at home with their families because we could hear from the different houses, the doors and the windows were open so we could hear from the kitchen and from the terraces that they were together, the families gathered together and having an Easter lunch slash dinner, spending time, spending the afternoon in family circles. So we couldn't really enjoy the town to the fullest. However, we found one hidden gem, which unfortunately has closed down in 2021. This is called the Tasties Cafe, which apparently closed down last year due to the COVID pandemic. This has been a cafe which was renovated by the owner's own two hands. On our third day, we went to Nicosia, the capital and largest city of Cyprus. We parked next to the St. John's Cathedral, next to which there is also the old Archbishop's Palace, which is, was built in the 18th century, and the new Archbishop's Palace from the 1950s. The new palace houses the Byzantine Museum and the Library of the Archbishop Big and the old Archbishop Palace houses, the Folk Art Museum and the National Struggle Museum. There is also a new church here which 
which is construction finished just last year. But from what I found about it, it is a controversial new monument which costs a lot while destroying other historical buildings in its surroundings. We wanted to go to Nicosia because we knew that the city had a very interesting dynamic. The Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot communities of this city segregated into the south and the north in the 1960s and following this there was unfortunately a crisis which broke the city into two separated areas. This separation became a militarized border between the Republic of Cyprus and northern Cyprus after Turkey invaded the island in 1974 occupying the north side of the island including the northern side of Nicosia. Today North Nicosia is the capital of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, a state recognized only by Turkey. As a result of the Turkish intervention in 1974, a part of the northern section of Nicosia including the former international airport has remained within the United Nations forces in Cyprus operational boundary separating the Republic of Cyprus on the south from the Turkish Cypriot administered areas in the north. Not so far from the so-called Green Mile, which is the line dividing the capital of Cyprus into Greek and Turkish parts, there is the Phenomereni church which is considered one of the largest Christian churches of the entire island. When Cyprus was captured by Turkish troops, they wanted the Phenomereni monastery turned into a mosque, as happened with many Christian churches on the island. However, for some reason, all the imams of the new mosque died soon after their appointment. It is because of this that after some time the Turks abandoned the idea of converting the monastery into a mosque and returned it to the Christian community. Following our walk on the southern side of Nicosia, we cross the border to the Turkish side. So in order for you to be able to enter this, you actually have to go through a checkpoint and there is a passport check. We cross through the Ledra Street checkpoint, which is a pedestrian crossing, and then it brings you directly into the city center of the Turkish side. Um, what is important to note here, I would say, is that Basically, it's a kind of a touristic area here and everything what they have set up there, like stores with Turkish uh, clothing and, you know, copies of branded items and also the cafes, uh, they are set up for tourists or that at least that is what I had as an impression. And as, as we were walking a little bit further from the center, it became very different the, the scenery. So I just now I'm going to let you enjoy the footage from the Turkish side and this is gonna be basically the last part of our trip. Cyprus can rightfully be called the island of cats and not only because there are more cats on the island than people. There is a legend that Cleopatra brought cats to Cyprus to exterminate snakes. However, a Christian version states that it was St. Helena, the mother of Constantine the Great, and not the ruler of Egypt who brought the cats to the island. The earliest archaeological evidence of the relationship between humans and cats can be found on this island in Cyprus. It is a burial of a man and a kitten which dates back to 7500 before Christ. And this brings us back to the Greek side of the island, the Christian side. So we finished our tour of Nicosia here and went back to Larnaca to our hotel. Guys, 
Thank you for watching. I hope it was entertaining and enjoyable, also informative maybe in a way. Uh, if you're planning to travel there, then uh, I wish you to uh, enjoy your stay. Uh, we certainly did. If you liked this video, support my channel with a like, or you can also subscribe and follow me for other content that I create. Hope to see you at my next video. Until then, bye! Thank you.